Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint and today it's all about bananas. And this video is inspired by one of you viewers, um, specifically Bryce, who um, brought my awareness in regards to bananas being seedless. And I wanted to show the importance of this and how in fact bananas reproduce. And the first thing I want to share is that bananas are in a category, most of them, of what's called parthenocarpic, meaning they're seedless varieties. I've got here with me a bunch of bananas that we picked up from the store. I'm not going to need to be buying bananas pretty soon because I've got behind me probably 50 to 100 pounds of the ice cream banana variety. So let's open up a banana. I'm sure you've all done this before. Let's peel this back here. It could go another day or two to become more rat ripe, but I just want to share with you that when you open it up, you can see that it's relatively seedless. But sometimes you might see some black dots. Let's see if we can see some here. Yeah, so we've actually got a black dot right in there. And that is the shell or a remnant of what would otherwise be the banana seed still quite sweet even though we're not quite there in regards to flavor so how do we get to enjoy these fruits that are seedless otherwise and how are these um, bananas actually otherwise discovered and created and the answer is quite simple now standing right underneath the banana fruits that are fruiting right over my head I'm gonna actually zoom in so you can get a better image of what in fact is going on Between each level and group of bananas are these tiers, which you um, which you may have noticed. And in between each of the tiers, if you come and take a look down here on the ground, you'll see these petals. And these petals separate each of the tiers between each group of bananas. And um, up above, I've noticed that the tiers are anywhere from about 20, maybe 30 bananas per tier. And it's got to be supporting well over 100 bananas that we're going to get to enjoy in as little as 60 to 90 days from now. This banana actually, in fact, went into blossom just at the beginning of September, and by the end of September, it stopped producing the female fruits with the flowers on the ends. You may have noticed that the way that it grows is the banana is the female fruit, and then the ends are the flowering ends, and now for the remainder of the plant, the lower part, it's only making male flowers. Those flowers are not attached to the female fruit. So what we're gonna do within the next uh, couple of days is remove that bottom end so the plant's not wasting its energy and resources and all of the fertilizers and nutrients we're putting in the ground into more flowering. And I wanna put it, I wanna make sure the plant's putting the rest of its time, energy, and effort into producing fruit that we're gonna get to enjoy pretty soon. So, why are bananas seedless? And I wanted to share the concept um, with you. Humans, for example, have 23 chromosomes. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So when humans reproduce, what in fact happens is our 23, or now 46 chromosomes are divided in half, and each of those halves, one from the male and the other half from the female, come together to create a new offspring, something that's genetically different from both, the, both parents, different from the female and different from the male. 
So humans have 23 chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes. So humans are considered diploids. Most of the cells in our body are of the diploid varieties. We're talking about our skin cells, our heart tissues, our organs, and our basically the majority of the cells that make us are considered diploid, meaning that they carry two sets of the 23 chromosomes for a total of 46. Unlike humans, bananas can be also diploid and or triploid. And if you're a, of a triploid variety, that means you're now carrying three sets of genetics. And the issue of what happens here is that when the cells try to divide and create the sex cells, the cells that make the fruit and the egg versus the cells that make the, um, the male part or this, the, the pollen. And if you're of an odd number of chromosomes, meaning you're carrying an odd set of chromosomes, you can't just divide those in half. And what has happened with the banana, and most of the edible varieties of bananas are derived from one of two um, species of bananas. One being Musa acuminata, and the other being Balbiciana. These two varieties, one being, the first being of a bland, not sweet variety of banana, and the second being a very seedy banana. But when these two varieties are combined, they create the delicious and sweet and seedless triploid variety of bananas such as the Musa ice cream banana plant that we have here behind us. So when it comes to pollination, even though the bees are there and the butterflies are there and the birds are there and um, and all these different pollinators are there taking advantage of the sweet nectar that's being offered by the plant, it's not necessary. These plants do not reproduce and produce fruit through pollination between itself nor any other bananas within your um, garden or orchard if you're, if, you're, if you're mass producing them. So I just want to share another example being that when a mule is created, a mule is a cross between a horse and a donkey. And when these two animals reproduce with one another, create the mule, and the mule is actually a sterile animal. And a mule and a mule or any other animal, another horse or a donkey, cannot reproduce with this particular um, breed or hybrid animal. Again, for similar reasons, being the chromosomes are aligned in a way that it can no longer pair and match in a way to create another generation. So, so the only way of reproducing bananas is by taking the pups or the, the daughter plants that are generated at the base of the plant and those can actually be um, removed and propagated to create the next generation of banana plant and I've done some examples of those earlier this year and I'll be happy to share those with you by putting those links down below um, for your convenience. So here we are next to two other varieties of bananas. This one here is called the uh, banana goldfinger variety and then just behind it is the um, Manzano, which is apparently some people have claimed that it has a flavor of apple. Um, so this is the Manzano um, variety of the, from the Musa genus. So Musa Manzano and then Musa Goldfinger. And then we just started off our video with the Musa ice cream banana. So we're gonna get to experience and taste all of these varieties shortly. But something else I wanna point out to you is when we installed this particular banana, it was a blazing hot 100 degree days or a very high 90 degrees almost every day. And what we did is we actually put a foliar spray on this entire plant. And what we used to create it was we used this organic product called Ivy Organic. It's a three in one tree guard paint where you just add water. It's a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. It's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product. And it says over here, right on the lid, it says ideal for new plantings and transplants, save injured and damaged trees, pruned and exposed surfaces. And what we did to create this organic um, foliar spray is we took a couple of teaspoons and added it to a water bottle and then just sprayed the leaves. And you can see since we sprayed it, you can see the white foliar spray that's on the plant, it's still getting um, plenty of sun when it's in the sun. Right now it's in the shade, it's still too early in the morning. But you can notice the new leaves that were um, that have since grown. We've got this leaf and another leaf that's coming out shortly. So this is just a tip I want to give you when installing your plants, not just bananas, but any other fruit trees, to actually consider keeping them cool until they get established and their roots have um, developed.
So if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. And most importantly, subscribe down below so you'll get to see how these plants continue to mature. The parent plant that's right behind this pup, which is enormous, and we've seen that it's grown probably 10, 15 feet in just the last four months. So to continue seeing the development of these bananas, be sure to subscribe so you'll be connected to all of these videos in addition to other educational Ivy Organics three-in-one tree guard paint videos. Thanks again for watching. Happy gardening.